Welcome. Hello. Dr. Meehan, thank you for having me over. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming on by. This All is right. awesome. All right. What a beautiful place you have. Well, thanks. This is a Saturday morning at the Meehan house. All right. You ready to do this? Yeah. All right. So we're going to do our 73 questions with you. So let's start. What is your name and what is your specialty? I am Dr. Rahul Meehan. I'm a urologist here in the Phoenix area. All right. How many years have you been practicing? I've been out since 2012, so 12 years now. My gosh. Okay, where did you go to undergrad? I went to undergrad at Ohio State and also at Brigham Young University in Utah. Nice. And where did you go to medical school? Wright State University. Cool. My hometown, Dayton, Ohio. Did you take any gap years before going to med school? Uh, I took actually two years off to do a volunteer mission for my church. Nice. What was your favorite part of medical school? Medical school? Uh, <laughs> graduating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems like it's going to be my favorite I, I, part. I loved all my classmates. I loved meeting, uh, you know, all my colleagues and just, just starting my journey. That was kind of cool. It was the networking aspect of it all. Nice. What specialty did you think you were going to go into on your first day? Pediatrics. Pediatrics? Were there any specialties you knew right away were not for you? No, I really was open-minded when I started in medical school. Okay. Well, what first made you fall in love with urology? Uh, good questions. You know, I had no idea what a urologist was mm -hmm. until I was rotating with one in my third year of medical school. And that, that was my first exposure to it. And I, I met this urologist, Dr. Calvacota in Dayton, Ohio. And he just had a, such a wonderful practice. The patients, you know, it's kind of a combination of family medicine um, and surgery. You get to have relationships with patients and you get to operate and you see them for a long amount of time. It's pretty cool. Nice. Awesome. Well, for those who are interested in urology, how long does, tra does your training take after medical school? I did a six year residency at Indiana University. Nice. Um, are there any fellowships to further specialize within urology? Yeah, so there are. I think it's more common for people not to do a fellowship right now. Um, the training is very complete in a residency. Most residency programs are five or six years, but there are a number of kind of really cool paths you can go outside of that. If you want to do academia, um, you can do a specific fellowship. Um, there are a lot of urologists that do like male infertility, you need a fellowship for that. There's a lot of um, advanced training for, for cancer, you can go do a fellowship for that. For pediatrics, there's a fellowship for that as well. So there's just different paths you can go, but for most, most urologists coming out of training, they, they finish the residency and just start. Nice, okay. Well, are you in academics or are you in private practice? Private practice. Nice, well, what do you like about private practice over academics? Uh, I like that I have, I can do a variety of things. Like I can reinvent myself. I can learn, uh, take on new technology, take on new disease states that I didn't treat before that I can continue to grow and expand in other areas. And I love that. I love, uh, you know, I would get bored doing just one thing and doing one thing only. I like the variety that urologists have and what they can see in private practice. Nice. Are there cons to being in private practice? Uh, yeah, there's the business aspect of it all. You know, I, I started my own practice and I run it, and that's a lot of work. Um, not everybody in private practices owns their practice or runs it, so I'm, I'm a little unique in that setting. But yeah, it's, it's, it can be a little bit much when you start running a business and running a practice and having partners and other urologists and a nurse practitioner and students. Um, but actually, I love all of that. Cool, awesome. Well, Time to put on your salesman hat and sell the specialty. So what would you say is the most unique part of urology? Oh man, <laughs> I like urology for so many reasons, but I think for me, we are, we are at this renaissance of new technology and in urology we've embraced that. We're one of the first specialties to really take on robotic surgery. Um, and it just keeps advancing and advancing and growing and growing. We're about to start a a new robotic surgery here next month where we're going to use AI, an AI driven robot to help plan and treat men with enlarged prostates, the next generation of aqua ablation surgery. 
And I just, I just love it. I love being on this cutting edge and the pinnacle of what we're doing. And urologists, it's, it's amazing. There's it's such a common, we treat such common disease processes. In Europe, there's a study and they looked at it and they said one out of two people will see a urologist in their lives in the UK. And I think it's, it's similar to that in the United States. Most everybody has some sort of urological problem. Um, and it, it's such a needed specialty. So I like it, we're needed, we make a difference. Uh, we have really cool technology and it's, it's ever evolving. Nice. What is up guys? Thank you so much for watching my video. I wanted to give a quick shout out to NDMD. He's the guy who originally created the 73 question series. Um, I just felt inspired by him to make some of my own. He recently got into residency, so he stopped making these videos and uh, I hope it's cool with him. I hope it's cool with you guys that I'm picking up the mantle in some way, shape or form. Um, with that being said, thank you so much for supporting me. Please drop a comment, leave a like and subscribe. And uh, with that being said, let's get back to the video. Well, let's, let's come to my table, let's talk. All right. So while we're walking, why should someone choose your specialty? Oh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's the best kept secret in all of medicine. Like we don't talk about how cool urology is but it's absolutely amazing. We take care of men, we take care of women, we take care of people of all ages. Uh, we have a uh, pediatric world of urology that, that's so, so um, important. We have, as, as men and women age, they, they have disease processes that, that affect them. I just love it. I come to my clinic and see people of all ages. And um, I just like that, I like that variety. Nice. Well, on the other side of the coin, why should someone not choose your specialty? It's pretty intense, and I don't think people understand that either. There's a high burnout rate in medicine overall, and, and in urology too. There's such a need for what we do, and there's a lot of emergencies in urology. So often we find ourselves taking call at a hospital, and there's a lot of places outside of big cities that don't have urologists, so patients are transferred from all over. And it can be pretty intense when you take call, especially when they transfer patients from different states because they don't have urologists there. Nice. Well, are there any stereotypes of your specialty? I think people, when they look at urologists, they think we're, we're pretty relaxed and chill. And for the most part, we are. Yeah. Uh, I think that's, you know, you gotta be, you kinda gotta roll with it. You gotta find humor in what we do. Um, you literally have a license to tell dick jokes, so that's pretty cool. That's one of my favorite parts of being a urologist. Yeah. Uh, you just, you know, you wanna make patients relax when they come in. And the, the subject matter is very difficult and heavy. And uh, just to lighten that up really, I think, helps open conversations. Nice. Well, my next question was gonna be, are the stereotypes true? But I think you've already, uh, <laughs> You've already confirmed that indeed they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is some of the craziest questions you've asked a student? This could also be known as in the medical community as uh, pimping. Uh, I'm pretty relaxed when it comes to my students because I was a student not that long ago and a lot of the things that we do as surgeons that we see in the operating room aren't necessarily taught in medical school. The anatomy is very unique in the pelvis and, and, and with genitalia. Um, so it's, it's, it's something that I think when students first start rotating with me, they really don't have a lot of idea or a lot of background education. So, you know, I think it's all new and exciting. Uh, I know I do, a lot, I do a lot of robotic surgery and, and we're there for hours and I can often point at different structures. But I think if you're gonna start a rotation with a urologist, you really wanna look at maybe a robotic prostatectomy on YouTube and kind of understand the basic anatomy, where the bladder is, where the prostate is, where the rectum is. Okay. And uh, those are things that I ask students kind of, you know, what, what is that? Where are we at? And it, it makes them more engaged. All right. Well, what would you say as when you were a student or a resident, what was the most outrageous thing you've been pimped on? If you remember. Oh, so much. Uh, <laughs> I got trained in a different era. It was pretty, pretty ruthless when I, when I trained. So, are you ever nervous coming into clinic or work? Uh, yeah, I do get nervous. I think it's a healthy thing to be nervous. Um, 
you know, I have, I, I do a lot of very big, complicated surgeries. And here, have a seat, we'll talk about it. Sure. The, uh, you know, I, I love it. I love taking on big surgeries. I love doing new, you know, taking on new technology. And, and when you're onboarding it, and when you're doing a difficult surgery, um, I am nervous. I, I do, <laughs> I do kind of uh, stress out about it a little bit the night before. And afterwards, I feel relieved that it went really well. So I think that's a very healthy thing to have and to be concerned and worried about patients. Nice, okay. So what does an average day for you look like? Busy, so I, I think I'm in the 1% of how busy a urologist is. And I know you're rotated with me and seen that. I can confirm, It's uh, <laughs> he's busy. It's insane and I love it. I feel like I'm, I'm a Jedi in his prime. Like I'm, I'm good at what I do and, and I, want to, I want to fight. I want to make a difference in the world and I want to help people. Nice. And uh, so my days are like this. So a typical day for me, I'll give you a, a clinic day. So my clinic days are Monday, Thursday, and Friday. So Monday I wake up early, I go to the gym, I do a quick work workout with a trainer, and I do a lot of functional training just to get my body up and moving and ready. Mm -hmm. um, I go come back home, get the shower, get ready, um, talk to my wife and my kids, have breakfast with them, try to get grounded. Uh, my daughter, who is on a volunteer mission in Missouri, I get to call her on Mondays and, and we talk on FaceTime. And then I head to work, I start my clinic at eight. And I see a lot of patients. So it's on my clinics, I'll see up to 50 patients. On uh, an average day? On an average day. Yeah. Wow. Um, typically around 40, but 40 to 50, somewhere there on a Monday. And I often work right through lunch. Um, and I'll stay at the clinic, I'll finish my clinic around 5, 5.36. And then stay back about an hour and return emails and calls. And then head home. And then uh, Monday night, we hang out with the family. Um, typically have dinner together. And if I'm lucky, uh, I'll head out Monday night and play some tennis with some friends. Oh. And then come back and hang out with my wife. Okay, that's awesome. Um, how many procedures do you do in a typical month, would you say? A lot. So like my <laughs> OR days are crazy. So it depends. I do some very long, complicated surgeries that can take hours. But other times I don't. A lot of my surgeries are very quick. Mm -hmm. you know, when I take out a kidney stone, it can take 10 minutes. When I do aqua ablation, it takes me 20 minutes. Um, a lot of the surgeries I do are just, just boom, 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 boom. So I think in a typical week, I may do around 20 procedures. I think that's probably a good, good average of where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in a month, that's, that's probably 80 procedures, 80 surgeries. Wow, my gosh. How often do you take call in your specialty? Uh, less now. Uh, <laughs> our group has just grown. We'll be at nine urologists next year, which is insane. And we divide it up and we help each other. So, you know, I typically am on call maybe one, one week a month, maybe mm -hmm. every five weeks. Hopefully it'll be less often moving forward. So, yeah. Nice. What time do you normally wake up? I try to get up at six. My alarm goes off at six. Okay. And what time do you normally leave the hospital on OR days? In OR days, my OR days are long. So, you know, eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. Okay. Um, how many hours of sleep are you typically working on? Depends on the day. Uh, when I'm on call, even though I'm not on call, I have to go in for emergencies every now and then. Mm -hmm. uh, just just Thursday night, I, I was ready to get ready for bed around midnight. I got a call, I had to go to the hospital, and then they get back till 2 a.m. Wow. And went to bed at, you know, 2, 2.30, and woke up at six. So different nights, or different, yeah, huh? different, yeah. Well, how many hours of sleep are you working on today? Uh, today is the first day I got to sleep in. I woke up at, well, we woke up at, at, at uh, 7 o'clock, 7 a.m., 7.30, and went for a walk, took the dog out. Nice, okay. Um, so, yeah. Are you a nighttime or daytime person? I'm an all the time person. <laughs> oh, that's a good answer. <laughs> okay, how long does it take for you to chart at the end of the day? I chart as I go. So I'm really, I think that's so important that, and I chart in the room with the patient and I read them my impression of plans at the end so they understand exactly what the, the message is and what the take home points are. And so when I walk out of the room, my charting is done. Nice, okay. Who are you most thankful for on your care team? 
for so many people. I, I mean, I, I love my whole staff. I, I love my front office, my back office, my scheduler, my manager. Uh, I love the other doctors, love my students. Uh, you know, I have, I have five kids. I don't love any of them more than the other. I just love them all as much as I can. And I think <laughs> I just love my staff in the same way. Okay, all right. Well, without violating HIPAA, what is the funniest or craziest thing you've seen in a patient chart? <laughs> You're gonna get a. This is gonna get kicked off YouTube very quickly. Um, yeah, the subject matter what I do is insane, and there's a lot of things that I think a normal person will look at and find just, just, just blow their minds. So like you know, but for me, I see this. I see this every day. Uh, there's just a lot of things, you know. It, you know the things that people talk about. Like at campfires, when I, when I, I go camping and I, and I sit around the campfire and I talk about some of the conditions and things that I see that just blow people's minds. It's, you know, penile fractures, you see those quite often. Um, when people are having sex and, and, and they, they tear the corpora, uh, the penile erectile chambers, and then blood comes out Yikes. and the penis looks like, a, <clears throat> like an eggplant, and then you have to surgically go in and fix that. You know, that, that's, that's sensational. I think people look at that but it's interesting when you see a patient with a penile fracture I'm I really think the social dynamics of that are really are really intriguing and when I was a resident I was at a conference in Miami and somebody wrote a paper and they looked at that they interviewed people who had penile fractures mm -hmm. and they found out that a lot of these occurred in extramarital relationships and they also occurred in um, not at not their home, like in the workplace or in weird positions or in weird weird locations. Yeah. So I find it really interesting when I have a patient that comes in the ER and I'm about to do surgery and fix it, to really get a detailed history. And I'm like, you know, who's that with you over there? And where did this happen? Where did this happen? And are you married? And you know, I just find it really interesting to see that context of how that happened. So okay, I find that very interesting. Cool. What is your favorite nerdy random medical fact? <laughs> um, I have so many. Uh, I'll give you. I'll give you a couple. Did you know that men who have anxiety and depression are two and a half times more likely to have erectile dysfunction? Oh wow! Yeah. So every medical student that ever exists. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, um, you know, I'm prepared to talk right now on male sexuality for a conference I'm giving next week. So I'm, I'm putting together a lot, of, a lot of information and data for a PowerPoint. And it's just, it blows my mind of how important for our health are the basics. And I think we lose sight of that as doctors, but really pushing, you know, for men's health especially, Diet, exercise, sleep, stress reduction, and really bolstering your, your relationships you have at home. I think all those things really contribute to, to better health and I think are more powerful than any medication we can prescribe. True, so true. Well, what's the most common medical advice you give to your patients? Exercise and uh, improve your diet. I think those are two things, just in that same vein, that everybody can do better, and really it helps out in almost all the disease processes that I treat except for cancer. Right, okay. So, what's the longest procedure you ever had to do? I do a lot of bladder removals, we call it cystectomy, so you take out the entire bladder, and when you take out the bladder, you have to reroute their urinary system, and often we, we make an ostomy, a urostomy, where urine comes out of a piece of bowel and that goes to the skin and they wear a bag. Mm -hmm. But you can do better. You can actually make a new bladder out of their intestines. And there's different ways of doing that. And at Indiana, where I train, we made these Indiana pouches where you take part of their colon and part of their intestines and it's like origami. You, you, you fold it into a ball and you make it into a bladder inside them and then a little piece of intestine goes up to the skin and they put a catheter in, you can catheterize it and drain their bladder and you take the catheter out and you can't see any bags or anything on them. They can go swimming, they can live normal life. And it's pretty cool, but that surgery takes forever. And in private practice, it takes me so long. There's so many different steps to that. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I, I did that the other, I did that a couple of years ago and it took me, I don't know, maybe 
eight to 10 hours to do that surgery. Wow. Okay, well, what is your favorite procedure to do? I have so many that I love. I mean, it's hard to have a favorite. It's like my kids, again, I think, you know, certain <laughs> days I like, I love doing robotic surgery. I do mm -hmm. a lot of robotic uh, cancer resections from partial nephrectomies to uh, prostatectomies. I like new technology. I love treating men with a large prostate. I use lasers to do that. I use a water jet to do that. I love all those surgeries so much. Um, but I'll tell you my favorite. My favorite is really drilling out a kidney stone with a jackhammer. Perfect kidney stone with lithotomy. Oh. So fulfilling. You get these people with, with kidney stones like the size of a golf ball. Mm -hmm. And you make a small incision on the back. You put in a tube with, with, with x-ray guidance. And I do that myself. I do my own access. And you put in a little sheath with the size of my finger through the back right in their kidney onto the stone and you take this jackhammer that goes through there that's miniaturized and it breaks up the stone and it sucks out the pieces and you get them stone free and the whole thing takes me like 30 minutes it's so quick and easy and it just you save that kidney and um it's an awesome procedure it's a procedure that i did a lot in my residency and my training and i still do that procedure today that's awesome okay well let's talk about your life outside the hospital what is your favorite thing to do when you're not working? Well, that's a great question. Uh, I work so much, I need to, I need to, to stop. But I, I, love, I love hanging out with my family. I love uh -huh. hanging out with my kids. I love hanging out with my wife. And I enjoy exercise. So like, personally, if I, if I have a minute, I'll go to the gym and lift. Uh, I play sports. I play competitive sports all my life. And, and I, I still play sports now. I love shooting shooting hoops with my kids. I love playing tennis uh, with my daughter and my wife. Um, and I enjoy film. I, I think I love the art and creativity and, uh, on the small screen. And, and I enjoy watching TV or movies whenever I get a chance. Oh yeah, and uh, on, on that note, we're, we're definitely gonna link your TikTok into this video. So if you haven't already followed Dr. Meehan on TikTok, you got to. Okay, well, you've answered my next question was going to be if you have significant other or any kids, but you got that. So, does your family ever ask you for random medical advice? No, actually, they, uh, <laughs> they stay away. <laughs> I feel like my, 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 my wife and my kids don't trust me as a doctor. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's interesting, I'll tell you. Um, I people ask me, I'm on social media and I, I post a lot. I'm on Instagram, doctor.mehan, I'm on. TikTok, Saved by the Balls. And I started social media just so that I could share with my family what I do, mm -hmm. my wife and my kids. Because it's such a mystery. We go to the hospital and it's all closed off and nobody can look inside it. And or we go to, go to your, your clinic and nobody talks about the issues that neurologists treat. So I, I started that with the purpose of sharing it with my wife and my kids so they could see what, they're, what, what I was doing during the day. And I was gone a lot, so I wanted to share the beauty and, and how I was helping the healing patient. So, wow. um, I don't think I answered your question, but. Uh, no, no, that, yeah. that's good. But the next question is, what's the weirdest medical question a family or a friend has ever asked you? Yeah, so in that vein, I post a lot of stuff and I'll post straight up, like, you know, surgical procedures and talk about things. And sometimes I'll come home and my, and I, my kids have watched that. And uh, I have to be very careful what I post because you know my kids and their friends are watching watching my my IG, and uh, so they'll come back and ask me. And I remember at once I, I did a I did a penectomy. I didn't show this. You know, you can't show, <laughs> you can't show a lot of the stuff on, on social media. But I had a guy with penile cancer, and you have to actually chop it off, and wow. uh, and then you can do other things to divert how they urinate. And, uh, but I was talking about penile cancer and the risk of penile cancer. And, and I came home and one of my, my daughters was like, dad, everybody's watching this thing on penile cancer, you know? And, and uh, I was like, just tell all your boyfriends that this is what I can do to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My gosh. All right. So now we're going to go into a little bit of some rapid fire questions. What is your favorite food to eat? Indian food. Okay. Any favorite restaurants in the area? Oh, so many. Uh, right now, I like Bucket Riders. In oh, Gilbert. that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Coffee, tea, or soda? Uh, none. <laughs> All right. I don't drink coffee or tea, and I try not to drink soda. Um, I'm, again, I'm really trying to practice what I preach. Uh, water right here, some creatine in it. Okay. Well, 
perfect uh, segue. How, and you're the perfect specialist to be asking, how much water should you be drinking every day? That's a great question. I think we as doctors have it incorrect. You know, especially urologists, we tell patients to drink so much water and then we treat other people because they have to go to the bathroom so much. And I think there's a, a fine balance. And if you really just look at your urine and the color of it, I think that can tell you where you're at. You don't want it to be white and you don't want it to be, you know, too yellow, but just kind of a normal, normal shade and color uh, is important. It's important to drink water throughout the day and, and to, to stay hydrated. Nice. Well, how much water do you personally drink every day? Uh, great question. So this is like 33 ounces. Uh -huh. I try to go through three of these in a day and that's my goal. If I'm at the gym or if I'm outside, I'll drink another one. Nice. But we're on there. Okay. Favorite meal from the hospital cafeteria, if you have one. <laughs> you know, that's a great question. And I always got mad. Like I felt like I was out of shape as a resident because I just ate hospital food three times a day. It was like Super Size Me, that movie. Yeah. But like in the hospital setting. <laughs> and I trained in Indianapolis and we had a McDonald's there. And that was the only, only restaurant that was open after hours. And then the surgical resident, we were working all 24 hours. So I ate McDonald's like all the time. And I grew very, uh, um, I think I got, I, got, I got some unhealthy ha habits being coming out of training. And it was like, you know, I love French fries. I love, I like hamburgers. I love like saturated fats and all those things. And it wasn't until recently where I started embracing more of a healthier lifestyle and eating more of a Mediterranean diet. But so my favorite thing in, 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 in the hospital now is I go in and I get just a bunch of berries and I'll put it with some cottage cheese and I can get a, like a great snack just through that. I can confirm, I've seen it. <laughs> so what's your favorite healthy snack? I like just straight up Greek yogurt uh -huh. with, um, with some, I love, I love blueberries and raspberries. Okay. Uh, favorite guilty snack or cheat meal? There's so many. Uh, <laughs> I love pizza. So like, you know, I, I, we went to Italy this last year um, and just having true Italian pizza was amazing. I think I still love pizza. I love American pizza. I grew up, I worked at as a pizza delivery boy in high school at Little Caesars. So <laughs> I'm always partial to pizza on Friday night. Okay. Better. Well, then you'll love this next question. It's a bit of a controversial one. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? I love it. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, Apple I, or Android? Apple. Okay. What hobbies or artistic hobbies do you keep up with? I'm a musician, and I grew up playing in, in rock bands, jazz bands, punk bands, ska bands, and I still play. And especially on Sundays, I'll pull out my bass guitar or my baritone saxophone, um, I'll, I'll sit on the piano, and I love that. Nice, okay. Well, what kind of music do you listen to? I listen to like a variety. You know, I'm working so much, and I really don't take control of the radio. I let the, my circulator and, and the techs and the nurses pick the radio station. But we, as a OR, more recently have gotten into reggae. Oh, nice. And, and, and just some <laughs> things that relax everybody. And I think that's pretty good. I listen to a lot of, I listen to a lot of that on my own. Okay. Well, what's the best way for you to relax after a long day? Uh, you know, if I'm really stressed out, I'll go to the gym late. I'll go to the sauna, I'll do some heat therapy. Um, I'll come home, I'll jump in my pool, do some cool therapy. And then I'll hang out with my wife. Nice. Nothing better than that. Nice. Are you a night in or a go out on the town kind of person? I like both. Honestly, I do. I love going out. But yeah. uh, it's hard with, with kids and, and, and profession and everything. Um, I'm becoming more of a stay in kind of guy. Okay. Of late. Nothing wrong with that. All right. Indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Beach or mountains? Oh. <laughs> I like them both so much. Um, I, I would say equal 50-50 split. All right. Any pets? Yeah. I have a dog, uh, a Catan de Talor. Oh. It's, it's like a Maltese. And uh, yeah, I love her. Okay. What is your favorite animal that isn't a dog or a cat? Oh, so, there's so many. Just in general, I think I, think I find 
jungle animals the most impressive. Like I just saw a, a video of a tiger jumping over a river and just the power of that, that tiger. And I'm a Bengals fan and I always, you know, from Ohio, I love the, the white tigers, but you know, anything from India, I like. Nice, okay. Well, now we're gonna get into a little bit of more reflective questions. All right, if you could have dinner with anyone in history, who would it be? It's Gandhi. Gandhi, nice, okay. Do you consider yourself to be introverted or extroverted? Extroverted, squared. Okay, well, would you say that this personality trait was a factor in you choosing your specialty? Yeah, I think I wanted to be original in what I was doing. And I remember all my colleagues going into orthopedics and I was like, you know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, be original, do something a little different. And uh, maybe that was why I picked gravitated to urology. There's no one going to urology in my program. There's no one that had been a urologist from Wright State University in years. Okay. All right. Well, what did you think you were going to be when you were growing up as a kid? Pediatrician. Pediatrician. So you always knew you were going to be a doctor. I always knew it. Nice. Okay. Is there a different specialty you think you could have done and been, been happy in? I think now, looking at it, I could have been happy in any specialty because they're all helping people. Nice. Okay, but if you didn't do medicine, what do you think you'd be doing right now? It's a great question. I was all over the place, and I got it. And I was in college. I, I knew I wanted to be a doctor, and then I kind of fought it. And I was like, I just don't know. And all my friends were going to law school, so I, I applied. I got into law school. I applied for for business jobs. I was an economics major. I had an offer at Goldman Sachs. I was looking at you know investment banking. So I was at a crossroads, like what I wanted to do. But what I secretly always wanted to do, and what I hope to do at some point in my life, is to go into film. Like, I love writing, I love directing, I love the creative process, and there's just so much art and beauty in everything that we do. And I, I like to just capture that and share that on the small screen. I think there's beauty there. That's, that's amazing. Okay. Well, medical training is hard, and everybody who's done it and who's gone through it knows that. Were there any times you doubted you would make it as a doctor? Yeah, all the time. My first class in medical school was anatomy. And I I didn't know I wasn't ready for medical school. I was an economics major looking at other things. And I got into medical school, I went. And I remember taking my first test and being like, man, I don't know any of these answers. <laughs> like I need to start studying. Like I had to like really buckle up and and and, and just sacrifice everything yeah. to to be successful. And I, I it took me a class or two in medical school to realize that. Yeah. I, I even had a rocky start until I realized, oh crap, this is, this is real. Yeah, I gotta, real I gotta you know, straighten up. <laughs> well, if you could change one thing about the medical field right now, what would it be? I would stop the hate. There's a lot of haters. And uh, you know, I think we, we are very critical on each other. And uh, you know, I don't think we really stop and listen to uh, other people's perspective. You mean like doctor on doctor criticism? Or? Yeah, there's a lot of doctor on doctor criticism. I go to the hospitals and there's such a negative culture there. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it's hard to practice medicine when, you know, there's just so many policies and, and, uh, and it's, everything is very political where I'm at. It's hard just to practice medicine and, and enjoy it. Okay. Well, we're, we're nearing towards the end. So what can a medical student do right now to prepare to get into this specialty? Get as much exposure as you can. You know, I think it's, it's a small specialty. It's, it's, you have to network and meet people. I would do as many away rotations. Um, but I would, I would just try to get as much exposure in the field and see as much as you can. And all avenues, look at the research clinically, um, just, just try to make relationships and, and, and connections. Okay, and last question to finish the interview. What would you say to the aspiring urologist right now? Buckle up, <laughs> it's a crazy ride. <laughs> but I like it, I, I still really love what I do. I genuinely love operating and take care of patients. I get excited in my clinic. I, I smile all the time. I come home fulfilled. And I love it, it's been very rewarding to me, but I would be very cautious on your time. And, you know, a lot of people are gonna ask for help and ask for, um, pull you in different directions. But you really gotta know what your direction is and what you want in life. 
and, and, and prioritize that. And then um, you'll be happy. Set, set, set ground rules and, and, and just make sure that you respect your time and, and prioritize your family over everybody else. All right. Well, that wraps it up. Our first interview. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, my pleasure. All right.